Yo, what's going on, fellas? I'm Demi Godson. I'm a top 500 flex DPS player, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Tracer in Overwatch 2. Before we start, feel free to ask any questions in the comments or in my Discord server. I'll try to respond to all of them. Also, yes, I am a console player, but I promise you that all of this information is universal and is useful on all platforms. Also, 80% of you guys are not subscribed and like, come on, please, please hit the subscribe button, please. All right, let's get this started. Tracer is one of the most valuable heroes in Overwatch because of her mobility and ability to take duels with anybody. She's almost always meta because she can be used in so many ways. To make learning her easy, I've divided her gameplay into three major concepts. Dive, Duel, and Distract. Let's begin with Dive. Tracer is the best in and out character in the game, and because of this, you should flank whenever you can find the opportunity. Try to go on flank routes and find an opening to go onto one of the enemy supports or squishy out of position. And for those who don't know, a squishy is a character who has a low amount of health, and in Overwatch's case, around 200 health. These targets are the best to focus because they're the fastest to kill and the most vulnerable to being one clipped. When you find the opportunity, close the distance between you and your target and go for the duel. Try to go for the one clip and don't forget to add in a melee if you need that last bit of damage, but if you can't confirm the kill, make sure that you're aware of where the enemy team is in case they come to help their teammate. If their teammates come, you have to get out of there because you will get punished. So make sure you don't use up all your abilities getting in. Try to save a blink or two or recall to get out. You should also be aware of where your team is so you can receive help whenever you need. To make getting the kill easier, avoid revealing yourself to the enemy. When you're getting close, make sure to crouch so they can't hear your footsteps. When you do get close, make sure you only shoot within 15 meters of your target and make sure that you're actually able to get the kill off. If you're farther than 15 meters, then you're not in one clip range and you'll just end up tickling your target. After that, escape and get ready to either play with your team or back off until you get your cooldowns back. Alright, let's move on to dueling. Tracer is one of the best duelist characters in the game, meaning she can take a 1v1 with almost any character. Now although you might think you need to get kills to get value, this isn't the whole purpose of taking these duels. You should focus on taking control of space and preventing enemy DPS from taking angles on your team. Hold off angles that the enemy DPS might take and challenge them if they try to. This protects your team and prevents the enemy DPS from getting value by keeping them out of the fight. You could even find opening picks by holding these angles. Play around natural cover to surprise enemies and challenge them within your effective range. Taking control of health packs can also be useful because they could be the deciding factor in a 1v1. On top of this, her kit allows her to run back to her teammates if they, or you, need help. If you're in range of your teammates, you can peel for them if they're being dived and challenge their attacker. Doing this is especially useful against Wrecking Balls or other tracers. One final way of controlling space is by chasing down targets. Harassing Wrecking Balls and marking enemy tracers should be one of your main priorities. You can keep up with any character in the game, so chase down targets. This forces them to either pay attention to you or retreat. Chasing down targets can also get you a lot of picks, especially when they don't have enough cooldowns to escape. You should also try to chase down as many kills as you can when the team fight is over to delay their regroup for as long as possible. But do understand that you will have to go back and set up for the next fight. Finally, the last concept of Tracer is Distraction. Even if you can't get kills and can't win against the enemy DPS, you can get value by simply putting the enemy's attention on you. For example, if the enemy team has an Ana and you harass her and force her to put her attention on you, she is distracted from healing the rest of her team, and your team should take advantage of this and push in while they can. You can also distract enemy DPS to divert their attention from killing your team. Any attention that you take can be valuable if your team utilizes it. To get even more value, you should be attempting to force cooldowns out of people. Try to force abilities to be used such as Ana Nade, Bap Emor, Kiri Suzu, anything that would be extremely useful in a team fight. This puts your team at the advantage without spending any resources and opens opportunities for your team to use ultimates. If you find yourself in a situation where you can't fulfill any of these goals, you shouldn't be afraid to switch characters. Especially against brawl comps, Tracer simply doesn't have enough damage or health to be able to get as much value as other picks could. In that situation, switch to someone that is stronger and better for your frontline. If you're getting poked out by snipers, or dare I say a Torbjorn, switch to someone long range yourself. Now with all of that out of the way, let's finally go through a kit. Tracer's pulp, tracer's pulp, tracer's pulse pistol, tracer's pulse pistols, and Jesus Christ. Tra tracer's pulse pistols require a lot of practice to get good with. They only have 40 bullets and you need to hit almost all of them to get a one clip with only body shots. So you should focus on getting headshots and hitting as many bullets as you can. 
Aim for around the neck to upper chest area so you can maximize the amount of bullets you hit. The weapon spread should mostly cover the body and because you're aiming at the high chest, a lot of those bullets are going to hit the head for extra damage. Also make sure that you can finish targets with a melee if you didn't end up hitting the full clip. Tracer's one clip range maximizes at 15 meters away. Because of Tracer's fall off damage and her weapon spread, I would recommend not shooting at all if you're farther than 15 meters from your target. Shooting from afar will tickle your enemies and you'll just reveal your position and it's not worth it. To get better at aiming, I'd suggest using some of the billion different workshop codes out there. I'd specifically do the ones where the bots move around randomly, such as this one. I'll put up a few on screen here. You can use these for practicing one clips, sticking pulse bombs, and hitting blink melees. Speaking of which, let's talk about her blink and her movement. Blink is the ability that gives Tracer her identity. Blink teleports Tracer in whatever direction she wants and should be used to traverse the map and dodge bullets and abilities. Her blinks are really important to have so make sure you always have one at all times. Don't spam all your blinks at once unless you know that you're safe because without them you're a really easy target. You need to keep a blink because it will help you in case you start getting shot at or need to make a quick decision. Blinks can also be used to climb up to high grounds and other off angles. They can also help you get over certain walls and obstacles such as the walls on Lijon Control Center. Understanding blink movement tech can let you go on rotations and take positions that you normally wouldn't be able to get to, and it could give a big advantage to flank or dual enemy DPS. Speaking of which, when you're in a duel, don't blink straight into the enemy when they're looking at you. It'll just make it easier for them to shoot you because you're going straight into their crosshair. Blinking straight forward into the enemy won't move your hitbox and will give the enemy more time to line up the shot. When you blink in duels, blink to the sides or in random directions to throw off the enemy and get into one click range. Also take advantage of high grounds and other map geometry that you could play around. You want to try to be as unpredictable as possible. Crouch spamming is also essential to Tracer's movement and has to be used whenever possible. And I don't mean literally spamming because that actually makes it easier for the enemy to kill you because they can just hold their crosshair still and wait for you to walk into it. To prevent this, move side to side randomly and crouch for varying amounts of time. Changing your crouch and movement pattern will make you even harder to hit. Make sure that you don't have toggle crouch on. Hold the crouch is a lot better to have because you won't have to press the button twice to stand back up. Have your crouch button on something easy to press because you're going to be using it a lot. One last thing you should keep in mind is your shooting pattern. Every typical tracer shoots their whole mag and then blinks during their reload. Although this is effective most of the time, I'd suggest switching it up every now and then, especially in duels. Try to shoot about half your mag, then blink, then shoot the rest. Doing this will make it easier for you to line up more shots and it will make you harder to predict. Now before I start talking about recall, I want to make sure that people understand that melee is really important for Tracer. Melee should be used to finish kills and get that extra bit of damage that you need. Put melee on a button that will be easy to press because you're going to be using it a lot and comboing it with your other abilities. Her most important combo with this is her blink melee. Blink melee is a quick way to get the finishing blow off safely. Use this in duels, especially against other Tracers to get that extra damage in. It does take a lot of practice though to get used to the distance you travel. Using melee also conserves your ammo for these 1v1s because you'll still be able to get that damage in without using bullets. Animation cancels are important to be used too, such as melee recall and melee pull spawn. That little bit of damage can mean a lot, so try to do this as much as you can. Recall is Tracer's get out of jail free card. It brings her back 3 seconds in time, heals her back to whatever her health was 3 seconds ago, and reloads her guns. The only problem is it has a 12 second cooldown, which means after you use it, you're an easy target. Try not to use recall for no reason. If you take a lot of damage, try not to instinctively recall because sometimes you're able to just get healing from a health bag or your team without having to use it. Also make sure that at all times you know where you were 3 seconds ago so you know where you're going to end up after you use recall. And a mistake that a lot of tracers make, including me, is that we get too greedy. Tracer doesn't have to constantly be trying to get kills to get value. She needs some time in between kills to regain her resources and set up for the next target. If you use recall in a 1v1, you need to chill out for a moment until you get your recall back. Pushing in hard without recall will more often than not lead to your death. Dying after getting a pick will just cancel out all the value you just gained and won't do anything to help your team win the fight. Alright, finally, let's talk about Pulse Bomb.
Tracer's kit is very strong and her pulse bomb is like the cherry on top. It can be stuck to enemies and it deals 350 damage, which can guarantee a kill on any squishy target. Your goal when using pulse bombs should be to get a pick or to force the enemy to waste resources such as Immortality or Suzu so your team can make a play. You can also pulse bomb the enemy tank at the same time as your team pushes in to weaken the enemy frontline and have your team finish them off. Don't pulse bomb characters who can easily survive the explosion without wasting any game changing abilities, such as Tracers with Recall, Reapers with Wraith, or Moyars with Fade. To further guarantee that you get the kill, you can shoot them before the pulse bomb explodes to get their health low enough to die from the explosion. During the mid fight, pulse bombs should be used to kill high priority targets, especially those who are ulting. Try to stick Rallying Briggs, Cassidy's in High Noon, or even soldiers in overcharge. But do make sure that you can bring follow up damage on high priority targets that can survive the pulse bomb, such as Echoes and Dupe, any tank, or anyone who's nanoed. It does take a lot of practice to be able to land these pulse bombs, so I'd suggest using a workshop code to get good at sticking moving targets. Pulse bomb is also one of the fastest building ultimates in the game, and because of the utility it can bring, it should be used as much as possible. There's no reason to hold on to pulse because it isn't supposed to be a big ultimate. It is meant to be a free kill or to waste resources, so use it as much as you can. Try to use pulse early in the fight to get an opening pick so your team starts the fight with the advantage. And now for a little bonus segment. Tracer is almost always hard meta, and although most people would try counterpicking Tracer with a Torb or Cass, actually mirroring Tracer has been one of the most effective methods of countering her. She's so good as a mirror match because her kit counters itself. She can control areas, take duels, and chase heroes, which makes her really good against herself. Against a Tracer, you want to challenge her and prevent her from going to your backline. When you're in the 1v1, I find that it's not always who's going to get the one clip first. I think whoever has the most control of the duel will be the winner. To do this, don't be the one to blink first. Blink in response to the enemy tracer's blinks. When the enemy tracer uses blink, they're gonna move their crosshair to where you were. But because you blinked in response to their blink, you will already have them in your sights and they will have to turn around to shoot you. Not missing your shots is also very important because you don't want to get caught reloading. Change up your shooting patterns by shooting, then blink, then shooting again. This will guarantee more shots will hit, especially in Tracer 1v1s. Be sure to also use blink melees because they're very useful for getting that extra bit of damage in for the final blow. Another thing to keep in mind is recalls. You need to know where you'll end up after you use recall to be prepared if you're forced to use it. Also make sure that you know where the enemy tracer will end up after her recall. When the enemy tracer recalls, try to blink into a position that is behind or to the side of where the enemy tracer will recall so you can get some opening shots before they can turn around. On top of this, take advantage of natural cover and health packs. You want to be in control of whatever health pack is near so you can get the extra health for the duel. Finally, you need to recognize where everyone else is in the lobby. If you can get help from your teammates, call for help so y'all can take care of the enemy tracer. If your team is down or the enemy team is coming, you need to run away. Make sure that you know that no one from the enemy team will come to help the tracer before fully committing to the duel. And that's about it. Wow, you made it through the video. I hope you enjoyed it, this and learned something. I included as much information as I could, so please drop a like or maybe even subscribe. I'd appreciate it a lot. If you got any questions, you can leave a comment or join my Discord server and talk to me there. Thank you for watching, and I'll see y'all fellas in the next video. Gotta wash them in the sink, smack it down to the floor, WWE. If you ask me for a feel, I gotta tighten. I ain't never going broke, I'm getting right in.